Now let's draw the Lewis dot structure for phosphorus pentachloride, or PCl5. So we know that the halogens can only form one bond, so they're going to surround this phosphorus central atom. So we're going to put a phosphorus in the center, and then these more electronegative halogen chlorides around that phosphorus. Now, there's two things we could do here. We could add up all of the valence electrons in that molecule, then divvy them out, or I like to just draw the valence electrons on each individual atom and then connect the dots. And this helps me not make math mistakes because when you add up all those valence electrons, I see so many students, and myself included, miss multiplying or miss adding and then you end up with the wrong Lewis structure. So I just say, okay, let's forget math and do this pictorially. Let's look and say, okay, phosphorus is in group 5A on the periodic table. So there's one, two, three, four, five Lewis dot structure, Lewis electrons or five valence electrons around that phosphorus. And chlorine is in group 7a, so there's seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to put this one over here because I can already see that, hey, it's probably going to want to bond with one of those phosphorus electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons around that halogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons around that chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven val valence electrons around that chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You get the picture. Each one of those chlorines have seven valence electrons. We could have said seven times five is 35 plus five valence electrons on the phosphorus. I think it's 40, but let's forget that. We already know they're all accounted for. We drew them on our paper. The chlorine has seven. Each one of those has seven. The phosphorus has five. Now let's just play our game of connect the dots. So let's connect here. It doesn't matter where you connect them, it's going to look ugly at first. You'll have to redraw it, and you'll get to where you don't have to do this quite so ugly. You'll, you'll be able to just draw it nicely on the first try. But I'm doing this just to show you and guide you through the first time you're drawing these Lewis dot structures. So now let's redraw it. Phosphorus with CL, 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 CL. <laughs> you hear my daughter Emily. And so now, all of the chlorines have their complete octet, eight valence electrons. So each one of those chlorine atoms are happy, as we say, or they're stable, that they have that isoelectronic to the Nobel gas configuration of eight valence electrons. And the phosphorus, it's kind of interesting, two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. See, there's two in a bond. Remember, a single bond represents two electrons, so two, four, six, eight, ten valence electrons. So this phosphorus is what we call an expanded octet. The only atoms that can expand their octet are period three, four, five, six, you know, and, a, and above or below if you're looking at the periodic table. So period three and down on the periodic table are able to expand their octet because they have d electron orbitals for them to go into. Atoms hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, numbers 1 through 10, do not have d electrons. They are not able to expand their octet. So this central atom could not have been a nitrogen. You'd have to have a phosphorus. It, nitrogen doesn't combine with five chlorines, but phosphorus can because it's able to it's expand its octet. So now this one has 10 valence electrons. So I'll say that one more time in a different way. Periods one and two can't expand their octet. Periods three and below are able to expand their octet, and they do. So this is a valid Lewis structure for this PCL5.